What does that word efficiently mean? Eloise. Accurately. Accurately, okay, so we can get the answers right. Okay, we don't want to solve them so quickly that we make silly mistakes, right? We want to make sure that we're getting the answers correct. Right, Kaden? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you think that the math practices that I point to go with our number talks, okay? So the first one says, we can make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs up. Absolutely, we can make sense of problems and persevere. That word persevere means that we're not going to give up in solving them, right? Okay, what about reason abstractly and quantitatively? Use numbers, words, reasoning habits. You think that goes with number talks? Absolutely. What about this one? Construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others. Does that go with it? Why does that go with number talks? Bella? Because when we turn and talk, maybe someone might not have the right answer. Absolutely. When it's time to turn and talk, is it okay if somebody doesn't have the right answer? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's why we do number talk, so we can talk out our strategies and figure out our solutions, right? What about this one, model with mathematics? We're not modeling because we don't have, we don't have any tools in front of us, right? We're just all mental math. So this one, use appropriate tools strategically? No, no it's all mental math. Attend to precision. I can be precise when solving problems and clear when communicating my ideas. Does that work? Yeah. Absolutely. Look for and make use of structure. Mm, possibly sometimes, but not always in number talks. Look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. What do you think? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Mm, yeah, not always. If we're working with patterns, possibly, but not all the time. All right, here's our first problem. Jacob, what'd you get? 100. 100. Trinity? 100. 100. Sydney, same thing? Luke, same? Okay. All right, turn and talk to a neighbor about a quick and efficient strategy. How do we solve that problem so quickly? Let's talk. How'd you share? Okay, what did you guys do? Did you do something different? I, I did 25, 25, 25, 25. So you just did re repeated addition? Okay, what about you? Four times five is 20. So did you set it up like the traditional way? Okay, works. All right, I see some people ready to share a quick and efficient strategy. Miss Eloise. Oh, listen up. Say it one more time, nice and loud, Eloise. I thought of quarters. You thought of quarters? What made you think of quarters? Um, I knew that um, 25 cents equals a quarter, and four quarters would equal a whole dollar, cents. Perfect. She said, let's make my nice little quarters here. She said that she knew that four quarters equals one dollar, and one dollar is equivalent to? 100 cents. Good. I like thinking of money. Did anybody do it a different way? Mm, Kylie. Okay, you got to talk me through it. Okay. All right. Okay, perfect. Good job. Did anybody do something different? Kaden. I do four times two point. Say four times two or four times twenty. Okay. Four times twenty. Okay. How did you know to do four times twenty? Because I knew that four times twenty would equal eighty and then four times five would equal eighty. Four times five? To get 20? Yeah. And then what'd you do? I added 80 and Okay. Added our partial products to get 100. 
Did anybody do anything different? Mac? I just did 25 plus 25. This is 25 four, four times, so I did 25 plus 25 is 50. 25 25 is 50, 50 50 is 100. Okay, perfect. So he kind of did something similar to Eloise. Eloise thought of quarters, and Mac just did repeated addition with the 25s. So 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 25. And you said that 25 and 25 equals 50? Okay. Perfect. Okay, let's do one more. A little different. Oh, I see some people with thumbs up already. Keep it right here. <laughs> if you're still thinking, thumbs to the side. Once you get the answer, thumbs up. Logan, hand signals. All right. Let's see. Aaron, what'd you come up with? Eighty. Carter, 80. 80. Jordan, 80. 80. Did anybody get something other than 80? We all agree with that the answer is 80. Yeah. You did get something different? I did 80. Okay. All right, so turn and talk about a quick and efficient strategy. How can we solve this problem? Oh, well, then we should be good. <laughs> Did you do the same thing as Layla? Did you do the? What did you do? You did. Okay, that works. That's kind of that's kind of what I was thinking too. All right, who is willing to share? I need to make sure everybody is facing forward and focusing and paying attention. Thank you. Um, let's see, Bella. Share your quick and efficient strategy. I did the traditional way. Okay, so you set it up the traditional way. You got to talk me through it. Four times zero is zero. Okay. Four times two is eight. Okay. Perfect. Was that quick and efficient? Yep. Absolutely. Taylor, did you do the same thing? Good. I like you guys using your hand signals. Um, Mia, what did you do? I put the original sign just said four times two, and I got eight, and I added zero on. Okay. Four times two is twenty. Okay, so we have four times twenty, but you were trying to create a simpler problem and did four times two? You knew that four times two was eight. Remember, however many zeros are in the problem how, is going to be how many are in the product. Um, Kylie. Repeated addition. Okay, so what did you do? Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect explanation. Okay, so multiplication is just the same as repeated addition, right? Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. All right, turn your attention to the smart board. Go ahead and read the problem of the day. Start problem solving in your notebooks. Rows first to represent the first fraction. The next time we make sure we shade columns to represent the second fraction, okay? But that's really good. I love it. What about you, Ben? Did you just set it up the traditional way? Two thirds times one half, and you came up with two six. Let me ask you a question. Could two six be reduced to what? How could we reduce two six? We have to think what number goes into the numerator and the denominator? Two. Two could go into both. So if we divide by two in the numerator, divide by two with the denominator, what are we going to come up with? One third. One third. Perfect. What about that? Is one third in simplest form, or can we reduce it further? Can't reduce it. Simplest form. Good job. So, Sam ate two thirds of half a pizza. What fraction of the pizza did Sam eat? What is it asking us? What's the question that it's asking us? Logan. It's multiply. Okay, that's the operation that we're going to perform. Absolutely. But it wants us to know what fraction of the whole pizza did Sam eat? When Sam came home from school and he was really hungry, was there a whole pizza sitting there? 
No. Maybe. No. No. Read the question carefully. No. No. Sam ate two thirds of half a pizza. So Sam was so hungry, he probably wanted the whole pizza. But was there a whole pizza sitting there? No. No, no there was only half. So first of all, I have to make sure that I know that there's only half the pizza to start with. Okay? So did anybody draw a visual model for this? So can I cut my pizza in half right away? Absolutely. So here's my pizza. I'm going to go ahead and cut that pizza in half. This part over here is gone. Sam's big brother ate it. He got home first and he ate it. Okay? So Sam is eating one half of the pizza, or he's eating two thirds of half of that pizza. So now what do I need to do if I have a visual model? I represented my half. How can I represent my one third? Let's do it a different color. Eloise, can you come up and show us? Okay, so do you agree now that we have thirds, that the pizza is cut into thirds? Here's one third, here's two thirds, and there's three thirds. That would make the whole, right? I need everybody's attention up here. Thank you. So we have to kind of dot or put a star in two out of those three. So let's put, there's one third, there's two thirds. Okay. How many pieces of pizza have both the shading and the star? Mia. Two. Two. I see one right here and I see one right here. Two out of how many total? Because I'm still thinking about the whole. What fraction of the whole pizza did he eat? Um, Trinity. Two, six. Two, six. Perfect. Two out of six. Is that technically the right answer? Yes. Could we do something a little bit more to that answer? What could we do? Mm, Kaden. Uh, you divide by two. Divide by two to do what? What's that going to do? Okay, you're right. We are decreasing the numbers. We're not changing the value. The value is going to stay the same. But what is that called, Mia? Reducing. Reducing. We're going to try to reduce this fraction to simplest form. So I need to make sure that I have, I can divide by the same number, the numerator and the denominator. And Caden says by two. So let's see if it works. Everybody, how many times does two go into two? Once. Once. How many times does two go into six? Three. Three times. Can one third be reduced? No. Nope, that's in simplest form. So, if you said that Sam ate two sixths of the pizza, you're right. That's still the right answer because two sixths is equivalent to one third. Got it? Yeah. All right, let's move on to something else. All right, here's our next problem. We don't need to put it in our notebook yet, just eyes up here. Thank you. All right, now we talked about Sam. Now Sam's sister must be hungry. She says Sam's sister, Anna, ate half of three-fourths pan of brownies. What fraction of the brownies did Anna eat? And then it says draw a visual model to represent the problem. What do you think is the first step in drawing a visual model? What might be the very first step? Erin. Drawing a rectangle. So I'm going to kind of use my shapes up here. And that's a big pan of brownies. OK. I don't want to do this on my own, so you guys are going to do it too. OK? You are going to get a piece of paper that looks like this. Okay, if you can see, there's a little piece of wax paper attached to it, and we'll talk about that later. I want you, when you get this, to kind of fold the wax paper up, and I want you to do what I did up here. Remember, this kind of is your notebook, this is my notebook. What I'm doing up here, I want you to kind of follow along with me. So fold the wax paper up, and the first step I want you to do is just draw that rectangle to represent the problem. I can multiply fractions by 
by using a visual model. I can multiply fractions by using a visual model. Sam's sister Anna ate half of three-fourths pan of brownies. So what could I do first? What's my first fraction that I'm looking at? Or that we're working with? Bella? Half. half. So can I cut my rectangle in half? Does it matter if I cut it vertically or horizontally? Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to go ahead and cut mine like this. Cut my brownie pan right in half. Okay, now here's where I'm going to give you Okay. I'm going to give each table some highlighters and some kind of permanent markers. I want you on the white paper to use the highlighters. Okay? So I need to highlight half. Correct? Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. So I'll go ahead and highlight mine. Here's my highlighter. Woo! I'm going to highlight half of that. Okay? Then, then I'm going to stop. Okay? So each table gets some highlighters and some markers you might need to share. Love it. Now you can see through, right? Mm -hmm. Which ones, now which one, which sections have both highlighting and stars? How many sections? Three eighths. Good. Can three eighths be reduced? No. No, it cannot. It's already in simplest form. Good job. You should have a visual model where you can kind of see through the wax paper. I can see my highlighting and I can see my dots. That represents a half and three fourths. So if you're looking at your visual model or if you're looking at the smart board, how many of those sections have both highlighting and stars? How many of the sections have highlighting and stars? Jacob, three of the sections. Would three be my numerator or my denominator? Numerator. numerator. Why? Hmm. Why would three be my numerator? Think about what a fraction is. Eloise? Well, because it's not your whole Absolutely. A fraction is a part of a whole. So the numerator is always the part, which is three, and your denominator is always the whole. What is my whole? What's my whole? Sydney? Eight. eight. Three eighths. Can three eighths be reduced? Nope. It's already in simplest form, so we're good to go, okay? All right, so we can say that Sam's sister Anna ate three eighths the pan of brownies. <laughs> it's a lot of brownies. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and move on. Here's a different problem. I have the visual model for you, and you have to tell me what does this pro what problem does this represent? How could we figure that out? Here's my visual model. What do you think? Why don't you turn and talk with your table really quickly? What do you think? What multiplication problem? Because remember, we're multiplying fractions. So what multiplication problem does that represent? All right, so what are we thinking? Everybody attention up here. What do we think? What problem is this representing? What do we think? What do we talk about at our table? Trinity. One half. Trinity says one half of one fourth. Let me ask you, Trinity, how do you know that? How'd you figure that out? Because, um, I saw like the first one with like a half, and then since you had uh, all those lines, it, it looked like one fourth because only one was just shaded. Perfect. Good job, Trinity. Okay, so, and I was kind of talking with Aaron and Sydney's table, and I said, let's look at, I see some highlighting and I see some dots. 
The highlighting looks like it's in a row. Do you guys agree? Yes. Okay. So how many rows do I have? Everybody. Two. 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 I have two rows. How many of those rows are shaded? One. 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 That's where we get the one half. How many columns do I have? Remember, columns are vertical. How many columns do I have? Four. Mac. Four. four. One, two, three, four. So there's my denominator of the four. And how many of those columns have dots? One. So Trinity, was Trinity right? Yes. Thumbs up. Trinity was right. One half of one fourth. Who remembers what that of means? One half of one fourth? Carter. It's basically one half times one fourth. Basically one half times one fourth. So one half of one fourth, that of means to multiply. So everybody do it with me. One half, use your hands, of one fourth one. equals, who could tell me? What does it equal? Ben, one eighth. Ben says one eighth. I can prove it two ways, right? I can say, well, this is the one lonely square that has both shading and a dot. One out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or could I just multiply straight across? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. So one times one is one. Two times four is eight. eight. So we are good to go. How are we feeling about this? Give me a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or an in between. How do we feel about this topic? I know we kind of just started it. I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. That's a good sign. All right. Miss Dern has the card one fifth times one half. What will the visual model match look like? So if I want to represent one fifth plus a half, what do you think that visual model is going to look like? Take a second. Draw it maybe in your notebook. What would that look like? Remember we start small. We start with just a simple rectangle. And then you got to keep in mind, what are those two fractions that we're multiplying? One fifth and one half. I need your help. So who can talk me through how to actually set up this model? I'm going to let you guys be the teacher right now. Help me out. Um, Kylie, what should my first step be? Draw a rectangle. OK. There's my rectangle. What next? If I want to multiply 1 fifth times 1 half. OK, so you want me to split it in half? Does it matter which way I split it? OK. So OK. Do you guys agree that that's half of the rectangle? Yeah. All right. What now? Shade one side. OK. Shade one side. Do you guys agree that I now have the fraction 1 half represented? Yes. Absolutely. All right, Kylie, what's my next step? I want to split it into fifths. How do I do that? What do I do? Draw lines going up and down? Yes, absolutely. I want to make columns now. So one, two, three, four. Do you guys agree that that's five sections? Yep. OK. So now what's my next step? Put a dot in one whole column. There we go. Am I good to go? Do you guys think that represents this problem? One fifth times one half? OK, so if this is correct, I'm going to count how many squares have both shading and dots. How many are there? One. One, one out of 10. One out of 10. Can we multiply straight across to check? Yeah. All right, so one times one is? Five times two is? Ten. Perfect. Can somebody check our work? I know Kylie talked me through it, and I know that we all did it together, but let's just check up there. Can somebody go up and tap the question mark box and see if we have the right visual model? Taylor, why don't you go ahead and tap that and see if we have the right answer? Oh, does that look like this? It absolutely does. Good job. We are good to go. Our problem cards are going to kind of intermingle with our visual model cards. Try to really find your match. Try to make sure 
before you come up here to the window and before you tape your cards up and before you start proving it, really make sure that you're a match. Okay, there's a lot of different ways that we can prove it. Okay, all right, let's go find our matches. Talk with one another, look at your cards. See what we can do. <laughs> one out of eight. Two, three. So two fifths and one eighth. One, eight. one fourth and one fourth. Well, let's prove it. So here's one section out of two, three, four. Good. When you are finished, just have a seat, please. Who did the one, the four fifths and one hand? Back and um, okay. how many, how many of you? On your post-it. The first thing that I want you to do is draw a visual model to represent the problem one half of one third, okay? So first, draw a visual model to represent that. And then second, all I want you to do is check your work by multiplying across, just like what we did with the matching game, okay? When you're finished with your exit slip, post it on the door on your number, and then we'll go ahead and get started with our Independent activity. Perfect. Number five, come on up and get your work. I want you guys to kind of work in a group together, okay? So if you have an activity, I want your eyes up here really quickly. Okay, the first part of our worksheet is an activity in our game called Roll It, Multiply It. So what we're gonna do, you need to grab a few dice. Two is probably plenty, you don't need four. What you're gonna do is you're gonna roll those dice and you're gonna create a fraction, okay? So I have a five and a six. I want a proper fraction. So what number has to go as the numerator? Aaron. Five. five. And what number, number would be my denominator? Everybody? Six. six. What if it was the opposite way? What if I had six over five? Could I do that? No. Well, that would create an improper fraction. We don't want that, okay? So then I'm going to roll again to create my next fraction. I have a 3 and a 5. So what's my fraction going to be? 3 fifths. So I've rolled it. Now I need to multiply it. So I can go ahead and multiply straight across. 5 times 3 is? 6 times 5 is? 30. Ooh, 15 over 30. Can that be reduced? Yes. To what? One half. one half. So this is equivalent to one half. What do you think these little rectangles are for on the side? What might these be for, Eloise? To show your visual model. Absolutely, to show your visual model, okay? The whole focus of the lesson today is multiplying two fractions using a visual model. So we want to make sure we're multiplying and then using those visual models to help us. Got it? So I put most of you in groups. If you did not hear your number, come up here. You're going to work with me, okay? Actually, let's sit at this table, okay? Does that work? Yeah, come on. What? All right, so first, it's called roll it, multiply it. So we want to make sure we're going to roll. Two dice first. Who wants to go first? Roll the dice. Well, Logan, you are, you are up. Oh, four and four. Well, four-fourths equals a whole. So let's try to make a fraction. So maybe pick one up and roll it again. Okay, four-sixths. Does that work? Could that be a fraction? So everybody on your whiteboards, have a marker. And let's write our first fraction, four-sixths. Four-sixths. Now we're multiplying fractions. So who can roll for the next fraction? There you go. All right, <laughs> what are the chances? Four and four just again. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Try one more time. Four or six, all right. You and Logan must have some. Some low. Three, six, does that work? Yeah. Okay, so let's multiply it by three, six. Okay, I wanna draw a visual model first for this. What should I do first in drawing a visual model? Make square. Logan's already on it. Make a rectangle. So let's draw our rectangle. The square would look like this. We need to make sure I would make it nice and big because we're going to have a lot. We have to represent both of these fractions. So I try to make it nice and big. No, we probably couldn't. All right, so first I need to represent four sixths. 
So I have to split this rectangle up into six rows or six columns. What should we do first, rows or columns? Rows. Rows? Okay, so if I'm gonna draw six rows, I'm gonna draw five lines across. So one, two, three, four, and five. That's a lot of rows. Here, bud. We're gonna have to shade in some of those, okay? So let's, you wanna use this one? Okay, so we have six columns and we need to shade in four of those. Okay, so I would shade in four, there's, woo, there's one, there's two, good. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have six rows and you're gonna need to shade in four. So there's one shaded in, there's two, three, four. So we've got four six, we're good, okay? Now we need to represent three six. So now we're gonna have to do six columns, okay? So we already did rows. So I'm gonna have to go, same thing, five lines up and down. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay? That's okay, buddy, we'll get it. Good. Now out of those columns, we're gonna have to put how many? Three. Three, three dots, or I'm sorry, dots in three of the columns. So if I did one, here's one column, right? There's two columns, and there's three columns, okay? So how many, once you do that, how many little squares or sections have both highlighting or shading and dots? What do you think, can we count them? Wait, it looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I think is, that's all I see. Do you see more? These down oh. here don't have the shading, right? Oh. It looks like 12 to me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Does that look like 12? Mm -hmm. Okay, so 12 would be our numerator. Well, here's the tough part. Out of how many total boxes? Let's look. Let's try it. Let's try this way, okay? We can kind of multiply and find it. So if I have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I have six on this side, and then I have one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, I can kind of multiply those two, and that'll tell me the answer. Six times six, 36. Perfect. So 36 would be our denominator. Okay, then we can check our work by multiplying straight across and seeing, right? Four times three is? 12. Six times six is? 36. So are we right? Yeah. Okay, did you get 12 over 36? Can 12, this is a tough one, can 12 over 36 be reduced? Is there a number that can go into both 12 and 36? 36. Six? Six would work. Okay, so let's try it. Logan says six. So I'm gonna try. Divided by six, divided by six. How many? We would split it into six. So that would be five lines, bud. Okay, so how many times does six go into 12? Six, 12, two times, right? Oh, how many times does six go into 36? Six. Six times. Now I have two six. Is that a fraction in simplest form? No. Mm, they're both even numbers. Remember when we have two even numbers? What can always go into them? What can always go into two even numbers? Besides one. Mm. What about two? Would two work? Okay. How many times would two go into two? One. One. One time. How many times would two go into six? Three. Three times. Okay? You have to think, like if I have, how many times does two go into two? If I have two pieces of candy, how many times can I grab those two pieces of candy? Just once, right? But if I have six pieces of candy, how many times can I get rid of it? Okay? Make sense? Two, four, six. So three. One third is our answer for our first problem. 
All right, boys and girls, we're gonna go ahead and wrap things up. You could turn your attention to the smart board. All eyes up here. Okay, let's say the learning target together. We can multiply two fractions using a visual model. And one more time today. Show me with a thumbs up, a thumbs down, or in between. How do we feel about this concept? Are we feeling good? Yeah. All right, nice job.